Good evening to everyone and uh, welcome to day 7 of uh, our uh, going back to mass conferences. Uh, before we start our session, I would like to invite everyone for a prayer to the Holy Spirit because uh, tonight is the vigil of Pentecost. You may uh, join me in this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit, you instruct the hearts of your faithful, grant that by the same Spirit, we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good evening, dear brothers and sisters. And uh, today is our uh, seventh day of uh, our sessions of going back to Mass. Uh, and I thank most especially those who may have uh, completed, almost, almost completed this because tomorrow is the last day of our sessions with uh, going back to Mass with uh, Father Reggie tomorrow. And tonight, we have already finished uh, one by one the parts of the Mass. And now, I will proceed with a very important theme that we need to understand with our um, celebrations of the Holy Mass. So if you would notice, um, I put there the title, we celebrate, and then in parenthesis, not just attend the Mass. So this is about full, conscious, and active participation in the liturgy. So I would like to focus on the word to celebrate. What does it mean to celebrate and not just to attend? So, most of the time, we uh, uh, just say, I will go to Mass. Or most of the time, I hear, I will attend the Mass. But what do we really do or what action are we doing during the Mass? Before I formally start, I would like to give you some, uh, some of the sources that I will mention uh, tonight. No? Presbyterorum Ordinis from Vatican II, Musicam Sacram also, and the book of Father Anskar Chupunko, Pastoral Liturgy. So these sources are very helpful for us to understand uh, the liturgy. So, uh, if we use the term celebrate, where does this come from? If you would notice, in the first part of the Mass, I discussed this also. So after the sign of the cross, after the greeting, we will go to the penitential rite and the priest invites us for the penitential rite. And in Latin, it reads like this, Fratres, agnos camus pecata nostra, ut aptissimus ad sacra misteria celebranda. So it used the term celebranda. In English, we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Sa wika po natin, mga kapatid, aminin natin ang ating mga kasalanan upang tayo ay maging marapat na gumanap sa banal na pagdiriwang. And so we can really say that we do not just attend the Mass, we do not just go to Mass, but we celebrate the Mass. My dear brothers and sisters, this is very important because if we would just attend or if we would just say, I will just go to Mass, it will be really a lifeless Mass. But if we start thinking that the Mass is a celebration, then it will become life changing. So my dear brothers and sisters, the next time that you will answer someone, where are you going? Please say, I will celebrate the Mass. And let us also see 
the question, who celebrates the Mass? Hindi po yan World Health Organization. No? That is who. No? Who celebrates the Mass? And uh, it is important that uh, we... It is important that we refer to the documents of Vatican II and see who celebrates the Mass. According to Sacrosanctum Concilium, the liturgy is seen as an exercise of the priestly office of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ Himself and it is a full public worship performed by the mystical body of Jesus Christ, the head and all the members. So it is the body of Christ performing the liturgy, performing the Holy Eucharist. And according to St. Paul, who is the body of Christ? If we turn to the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, and now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. So if Sacrosanctum Concilium tells us that it is the body of Christ celebrating the Mass, and if St. Paul says that the body of Christ is us, the Church, then who celebrates the Mass? Is it the priest? Is it only the priest with the sacristans? Is it only the priest with the choir? No. The celebration of the Holy Mass is by the whole body of Christ. And the body of Christ is all of us. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us avoid saying that the celebration of the Holy Mass is just about the priest. And we just attend the Mass. So I have heard this already many times, that the priest is like the one celebrating and then we just attend. But if we look at it that way, then we will see ourselves as, uh, pwede pwedeng namang wala ako sa misa. Kasi yung pari lang naman ang nag-celebrate ng Mass. O kaya nagpamisa na ako, okay na yan. Bahala na si Father mag-celebrate ng Mass. Let us avoid saying those things because the celebration of the liturgy, the celebration of the Holy Mass, is the celebration of the whole church, of the whole body of Christ. Kaya wag na po nating sasabihin na Halimbawa, sasabihin natin, matutuloy naman ang misa kahit wala kami. O kaya minsan may naririnig din akong ibang pare, no? minsan guilty rin po ako dito. Sasabihin ko na hindi naman matutuloy ang misa kung wala ako. No? So, makakapagmisa naman ako mag-isa. Makakapagmisa naman ako kahit ako lang o isang sakristan lang. We, do, we avoid those uh, saying those things because according to the Second Vatican Council, the Mass is and should be the celebration of the whole body of Christ, the whole people of God. And we also look at how we celebrate the Mass together. According to Presbyterorum Ordinis, the sacrament of ordination makes the priest to act in the person of Christ the head. And while the body of Christ, the members of the body, are the baptized people, and because of their baptism, they were chosen, they have the right and duty by reason of their baptism to celebrate the Holy Mass. And so, the one celebrating the Holy Mass is the body of Christ, the priest acting as Christ the head, the presider, and the body of Christ, the congregation as the members of the body of Christ. And we need to understand that the celebration of the Holy Mass is not just about you attending my Mass. Let us be clear about that. The congregation do not just attend the Mass of the priests. 
but it is our Mass. And so you are indispensable. You need to be there in the Mass. And it will be beautiful if the whole community joins the priest celebrating the Mass because the body of Christ will be complete. The priest acting as the head of the body while the congregation as the members of the body. Kapag wala ho kayo, ay baka kulang ho yung isang kamay. Kulang yung isang parte ng paa. The whole body of Christ should be together. And your celebration of the Mass is a dignity coming from your baptism. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful reminder to all of us that when you enter the church according to Sacrosanctum Concilium, you have the dignity of a baptized person. And your dignity as a baptized Catholic gives you the right and the duty to celebrate the Eucharist, to celebrate the Mass together as a church. I remember uh, there was this one friend of mine no, years ago. Uh, he was not Catholic. So he tried to ask me, why do Catholics use the word Simba because in their church they use the term Samba so he said I think it uh, in our language it uh, functions well it functions better to say na sasamba ako sabi niya ang simba ay parang walang kahulugan sa salita natin mas may kahulugan daw ang salitang Samba so for, for those who are non-Filipinos listening to us, Simba is not the, the son of Mufasa in Lion King. No? Or Samba is not a dance. So that's not Simba, Simba or Samba. No? These are Tagalog terms. No? Because we use two terms in our worship. No? Simba o Samba. And I was challenged by the question. Oo nga naman. No? Uh, parang it makes sense to use the term Samba to worship rather than Simba. But if we would look closely at those Tagalog terms, why do Catholics use Simba instead of Samba? The word Simba comes from the word Simbahan or church. And it is used because you go to the Simbahan to worship. That is why we use the term si simba ako because I will go to simbahan, the church. But if we would dig deeper, it gives a lot more deeper meaning than that because magsimba means that we worship as a church. Kung ikaw ay si simba, Ibig sabihin, ikaw ay sasamba kasama ng simbahan. At kapag tayo ay nagsisimba ng sama-sama, nagiging iisa tayong simbahan. Kasi pwede naman akong sumamba mag-isa nang wala kayo. Kaya ang pagsamba ay kaya nating gawin ng iisa. Pero hindi mo kayang magsimba ng ikaw lang. Kaya ginagamit nating mga katoliko sa ating pagmimisa ang salitang simba. Kapag nagsimba ka, ikaw ay sasamba sa Diyos kasama ng simbahan. At hindi lamang kayo pumupunta ng sama-sama sa simbahan, kundi kapag sama-sama tayong nagmimisa, lumalabas, nabubuo ang simbahan, ang katawan ni Kristo. Kaya wag po kayong mahihiyang gamitin ang salitang simba kapag may nagtanong sa inyo. Ang simba ay ginagawa ng simbahan at tayo ay sama-samang nagdiriwang ng misa bilang isang simbahan. And so, if the celebration of the Mass is performed by the whole church, not just the priest, not only the ministers, but the whole body of Christ, kung ang 
buong simbahan ang nagsisimba at nagdiriwang ng banal na misa, therefore, for the Mass to be life-changing, the priest and the faithful should celebrate well. This is not a quotation I got from a book. This is my own quotation. <laughs> so I put it in bold letters. For the Mass to be life-changing, uh, that's our title, no? making our celebrations life-changing. If you want your celebration of the Mass to change your life, to really affect you, then the priest and the faithful should celebrate well. So, I will now uh, turn to the question, if that is our premise, then how can the faithful celebrate well? I will not discuss the part of the, the priest because that is another topic altogether. No? So we will discuss with priests no, how to celebrate Mass well, but now I will focus on how can the faithful celebrate well the Holy Mass. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, the celebration of the Mass is, should be a collaboration between the priest and the faithful. And whatever function we do in the celebration of the Mass, if we do it properly, then the celebration of the Mass will truly be beautiful, will truly be life-giving. Kaya po, Mutually, we need each other during the Mass. So as priests, it is our task to prepare our homilies. It is our task to speak clearly, to speak very well in the microphone so that we, you could hear us from the back of the pews. But at the same time, the Mass is not only the job of the priest. Madalas kasi nakikita nyo lang kami, no? Minsan nakakatampo rin, no? Minsan kapag lumabas sa misa, ako yung pare nakakaantok, no? O yung pare ay parang ano, na parang tamad tamad, no? Pero tingnan din natin, no? Not only the priests, but also the faithful. Did you perform your part well? Did you function well during the celebration of the mass? So I remember uh, when I was a new priest, um, there was this daily mass goer who always sits right in front of the lectern. And whenever I deliver my homily, he would look always uh, on his watch, always. And then sometimes, no, maghihikab pa talaga sa harapan ko no ang laki ng hikab niya talagang mag-iinat pa sa sa ano no sa sa harapan ko no eh kapag ganun ang nakaharap sa iyo at nagho-homily ka eh talagang mawawalan ka ng gana kasi pinapakita ng mga tao na parang nako ang tagal naman nito nakakaantok na ganyan no sa simula pa lang minsan eh kumihikab na kapag ganun pa lang ang nakita ko sa simula ng homily ko mawawala na ko talaga ako ng gana. No? Kaya nga, parang minsan, mas gusto ko na yata magsalita sa inyo pag camera lang ang kaharap ko kasi ini-imagine ko nakikinig kayong lahat mabuti sa akin. Pero hindi ko alam ngayon kung sino na ang inaantok sa inyo sa pakikinig sa akin. No? But, you know, we need to collaborate. The priest should prepare well, but the faithful also should listen well, should prepare their hearts very well. So now, we will answer, how can the faithful celebrate well the Holy Mass? If you would be memorizing something during my talk, these are the words that I uh, put in bold letters. Mother Church earnestly desires that all the faithful should be led to the full, conscious, and active participation in liturgical celebrations. I will repeat that uh, those three words, full, conscious, and active participation. If you will remember something for my, during my talk tonight, these are the words that I would like you to take down in your notes 
or remember, the faithful should be led always to full, conscious, and active participation. And when we are led to that kind of participation, according to Sacrosanctum Concilium number 14, it will be a primary and indispensable source from which the faithful are to derive the true Christian spirit. If only we participate well, full, conscious, and active, then we will derive from the celebration of the Mass the fruits of the Spirit, the grace of this sacrament. And how can we, if according to Sacrosanctum Concilium, we need to have full, conscious, and active participation, then how can we do that? So, Sacrosanctum Concilium, again, no, um, enumerates to us how can we promote full, conscious, and active participation among the people? According to Sacrosanctum Concilium number 30, to promote active participation, the people should be encouraged to take part by means of acclamations, responses, psalms, antiphones, hymns, as well as by actions, gestures, and bodily attitudes. And at the same time also, a reverent silence should be observed in proper times during the Mass. Sacrosanctum Concilium wants the faithful to participate by singing, by responding, by acclamations, by hymns, even gestures, bodily actions and gestures within the celebration. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, by doing all those things, you can celebrate the Mass very well. I would just like to point out also uh, a very beautiful point in Musicam Sacram, number 15. According to Musicam Sacram, there are two participations that we need to fulfill. Internal and external. Internal meaning, we join our minds to what we pronounce, what we hear, and we cooperate with heavenly grace. And externally, we also participate through gestures, responses, and singing. The liturgy tells us that internal and external participation are not separate from one another. They are inclusive. If we participate externally, then our external participation would be internalized in us. And so we should not look at them as separate. Baka sabihin nyo lang, no, I will just participate internally. I will not say anything, I will just be quiet and pray my rosary during the Mass. Nako, that is not full participation. You cannot just say, I will just participate internally and be quiet. Or, I cannot just say that, oh, I will be very active, I will do everything, I will sing, I will dance, no? I will uh, do everything during the Mass, but internally, you are, you know, out of the church and your mind is going uh, everywhere. External participation leads to internal participation. And when we participate internally, then our external participation would become more fruitful. I always use this uh, uh, example when I discuss these two points, the internal and external participation when I give talks to choirs. You know, there is this one uh, offertory song that is very famous in, uh, in uh, our parishes. No? Baka alam niyo po yung kanta na, Kunin mo 
o Diyos. No? Kapag kinanta na yan, alam mo nang lalabas na yung mga magkokolekta. No? Parang nai-imagine mo na sila. No? Siguro nung kinanta ko, na-imagine nyo na. Baka napahugot na kayo sa bulsa nyo ngayon no? habang kinanta ko yan. No? Pero pag kinanta na yan, nai-imagine na natin, lalabas na yung magkokolekta, magbubukas na ng bag, yung mga nanay, no? bubunot na ng pang-kolekta, uh, pagbibigay sa kolekta. It seems that eh, memorize na nga natin yan, no? Yung kanta na yan. Memorize nyo sigurong lahat yan. Kahit nakapikit tayo, kapag narinig nyo na yung intro, ay sasabay na tayong lahat. But I usually say to choirs, we have already memorized those songs and hymns by heart. We know the words. We know the melody. But have we internalized the meaning of the song? You know, towards the second part of the song, kakanta po tayo, no? Nagmula sa'yo ang lahat ng ito Muli kong handog sa'yo patnubayan mo't paghari ang lahat So, the lyrics are very beautiful, no? If you would look closely, nagmula sa'yo ang lahat ng ito Muli ko lamang hinahandog sa'yo. What a beautiful song to accompany the offertory and even the collection. Baka kinakanta lang natin yan, memorize na natin, nakasanayan na natin yung kanta, pero na-internalize ba natin? Na yung binibigay ba natin ay talaga bang nakikita natin ito po'y galing sa inyo. Hindi po ito sobra ko lamang. Hindi po ito yung napulot ko lang at yun ang ibabalik ko sa iyo, Panginoon. Na-internalize na ba natin yung salita, yung kinakanta natin na kapag nagbibigay tayo sa Panginoon, talaga bang sinasabi natin ng buong puso at buong pag-awit natin, nagmula po sa inyo, Panginoon, ng lahat ng ito, muli ko lamang pong ibinabalik sa inyo. I think that song is very beautiful to be sung during the offertory. And I hope that as we have memorized that song, and the next time you sing that song during the Mass, if we are already allowed for public celebrations, I hope that the offertory, the collection of our donations and help to the Church would become more meaningful, more life-changing, with the accompaniment of that song. That is external, singing that song, but also internalizing it, internal participation. Another uh, point that most of the time is not noticed in our celebrations is silence. Father Anskar Chupunko, the renowned Filipino liturgist, has this re beautiful reflection on silence. Silence, according to him, is a ritual action. It is not just a pause, but it is a rite in itself. And it, that is meant to deepen our awareness of the presence of the divine mystery. Silence is part of active participation. My dear brothers and sisters, you would notice that sometimes there are gaps or silent gaps, bit, gaps no, bit, within the liturgy. Those are not just gaps according to Father Anskar Chupunko. Silence itself is a right. And so, uh, sometimes if the priest, you would notice after the homily, some priest would give a few moments of silence, uh, do not be disturbed. No? Minsan sinisilip natin, ano man nangyari kay Father? No? Ba't nakatulog yata? O, uh, bakit tumigil? Ba't tumahimik? Those pauses of silence, rites of silence are meant for us to digest well, to deepen well our awareness of the presence of God. And so it is important also, if we need to participate well also, we need also to participate in silence. And so my dear brothers and sisters, again, 
this is my uh, reminder to all of us tonight. We celebrate. We do not just attend the Mass. Who celebrates? The whole body of Christ. Not only the priests, not only the ministers, but it is a celebration of the whole body. Sana po, wag niyo na po ulit sasabihin na matutuloy naman ang misa kahit wala ako. Matutuloy nga ang misa, pero alam naming kulang kami ng isang parte ng katawan ni Kristo. At ikaw yon. Sana po wag na ulit nating sasabihin na ah, okay lang naman na ah, ako'y mag-absent o malate sa misa. Eh, kasi tutuloy naman yan kahit wala kami. Hahabol na lang kami. No? Ang pagdiriwang ng misa ay hindi lang kami. Kasama po kayo. Tayo pong lahat ay sumisimba. At kapag tayo ay nagsimba at nandoon kayong lahat, nako ang ganda, buong buo ang simbahan. At lalo na kapag ang pari, kapag ang mga miyembro ng simbahan ay naghanda ng mabuti para sa misa, naku napakaganda siguro ng ating pagdiriwang ng banal na misa. It will truly be a life-changing celebration. Not just attendance, but a life-changing celebration of the Holy Mass. I hope you will indulge, indulge me with just a few minutes more. I would just like to end my uh, session tonight by telling you an unforgettable story that I have as a young priest. During my first year as a priest, I have already uh, told this story many times, but I would like to repeat for uh, many of you. You know, one mass that I cannot forget in my life during my first year as a priest was during Christmas. I was invited to a Christmas party gathering of a school for the deaf. Isa pong skwelahan para sa mga deaf brothers and sisters natin. At first, I had second thoughts because I told the teacher, I do not know sign language. How can I talk to them? How can I celebrate Mass with your students who are deaf? Because I do not even know how to, uh, to uh, do sign language. And I was surprised by the answer of the teacher. He said, Father, wag kayo mag-alala. They will understand you. So I was surprised. How can they understand me? I do not even know how to do sign language and they cannot hear me. So I went to the Mass, the celebration of the Mass during their Christmas party. And again, I asked before I began the Mass, I asked them, will there be someone who would uh, interpret my uh, Mass in sign language? No, Father, do not worry. We taught them lip reading so ha, so they will understand you because not because you will do sign language but they are reading your lips even if they do not hear a sound of your voice they will read your lips and they will understand what you are saying you know i i started the mass and i was surprised that they are responding through sign language but I was not talking to them in sign language. It means that they understand what, they, what I was speaking through my lips. And during my homily, I was talking to them and I was asking them, sabihin ko, oh, sino dito ang gagraduate na, taas ang kamay? Kahit na walang nag-sign language, oh, nagtataas sila ng kamay, yun pala, they are reading what I am saying through my lips. And I tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, I think that was the only Mass that no one slept during my homily. And everyone was full attention to me. Why? Because they were reading my lips. They were looking at my lips. That was the 
mass that I celebrated where everyone was looking at me and attentive to what I am saying. And even if they cannot speak very well, they respond through sign language. They listen to what I am speaking by looking at my lips. I told myself, these people cannot hear. They were not given the gift of hearing. But I realized these people who cannot hear are truly the ones who listen to my homily. Buti pa sila na hindi nakakarinig. Sa tingin ko, mas attentive pa sila sa mga taong physically ay nakikin, nakakarinig pero hindi naman talaga nakikinig sa misa. Buti pa sila na hindi makapagsalita ng mabuti. Nagsasalita sila. They respond to the Mass with sign language, with all their bodies, with all their efforts, with all themselves. They respond. Sabi ko, buti pa itong mga hindi nakakapagsalita ng mabuti. Sumasagot sila gamit ang katawan at kamay. Yung mga taong nakakapagsalita ng normal, ni hindi sumasagot at kumakanta sa misa. I will not forget that experience. These young people who were not given the gift of hearing and speaking, they were the ones who truly listened and responded in my Mass. My dear brothers and sisters, the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, the celebration of the Holy Mass is a celebration of all of us. And it will be life-changing if we will participate and celebrate it well. Thank you once again for uh, uh, listening and uh, uh, attending this session. And uh, before we end this session tonight, I would just like to um, greet the sisters of the Holy Family of Nazareth uh, in their community in Bohol. No? They said that Almost every night they are watching our uh, sessions. And you would like also to thank Island Rose and uh, Perfect Petals for our beautiful uh, flower arrangement, uh, especially for as we celebrate the Pentecost. So thank you for your uh, uh, help in uh, making our celebrations beautiful. And uh, tomorrow is our last session. Unfortunately, that will be our last session tomorrow, but it will be delivered by Father Reggie Malikdem tomorrow at 8 uh, p.m. And uh, for those who are asking uh, if you could get a copy of the videos or a copy of the slides, we will try our very best to share all of these after the last uh, session tomorrow. So please... Um, uh, tune in tomorrow for our last session. Of course, not the least, no, the last session, but I think uh, Father Reggie will be concluding these sessions very well as we try to make our celebrations of the Holy Mass life-changing. You can now join me in our closing prayer, and we thank the Holy Spirit for being with us tonight. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill my heart with your gifts. Let my love be true and my charity be generous. Help me in all my needs and grant me knowledge to do what is right. Advise me in my doubts. Strengthen me in my weakness. Protect me when I am tempted and console me when I am afraid. Graciously hear me, O Holy Spirit, and pour your light into my heart, mind, and soul. Help me to live a holy life and grow in goodness and peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just an additional invitation at 11:30 p.m. tonight.
the Holy Father, Pope Francis, will pray the rosary together with the whole world. And uh, it will be live on our Facebook page. So please uh, tune in tonight at 11.30 p.m. And we will all together pray the Holy Rosary with our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Maraming salamat po sa inyo at magandang gabi muli